Here are the top five Rolex myths. Myth number one, Rolexes don't tick, they only glide. This is probably one of the most common myths. In fact, here we took a footage of a Rolex and we've slowed it down about four times. And in fact, if you look closely, it doesn't glide. It ticks about eight times per second. Myth number two, Rolex makes the most expensive watches. That is actually one of the worst myths you'll hear. In fact, in comparison to Patek Philippe, Richard Mill, Audemars Piguet, Rolex is considered relatively affordable in the luxury spectrum. Myth number three, Rolex made the very first automatic watch. This is actually an important one and it goes far back in history to the point where there was a dispute and eventually Rolex apologized and gave full credit to the watchmaker John Harwood. John Harwood was a British watchmaker that in about 1923 set up his own workshop and developed the very first self-winding mechanism which Rolex somehow ended up taking credit for but at a much later stage apologized and gave the credit right back to him. Myth number four. This is one of the most common ones out there and it's checking if a Rolex is fake by authenticating the glass through the Cyclops and the Rolex crown etching at six o'clock. This is truly one of the most common ones out there and it's one of the worst ones because it misguides people. In fact, some Rolexes don't even come with a Cyclops like the Seedweller and many, many other models, especially ones that don't even have a date function. No shit. And in fact, up until the early 2000s, Rolex never used to put a Rolex crown etching at the six o'clock position on the glass. And even after then, a watch like the Rolex Milgas with the green tinted glass still until now does not have a Rolex etching. Also, fake watches have now come so good to the point where it has all the hallmarks and the etching where it needs to be. The concentration really needs to be on the finish and the fit. Also, referring to a watch as fake just because it has a fake glass really doesn't make sense. That's like calling a Mercedes not a Mercedes just because it has an aftermarket windscreen. Before we move on to the next myth, one last thing about the Cyclops, and that is it's not always two and a half times magnification. In fact, forget vintage, even on the modern watches. I personally had a GMT Master II with the ceramic bezel fitted with a one and a half times magnification, a very modern piece, which was actually admitted by Rolex that they had a bad batch of glass for that year and they ended up changing for us absolutely for free. Myth number five, and I truly, truly hate this one. This is the one that I really hate the most because it misguides people. A Rolex only goes up in value. Not all Rolexes go up in value. In fact, a lot of them go down in value to the point where they reach bottom low and then from there onwards they start going up in value like most things in life once it hits the bottom low it's only got one way to go if you pardon the pardon <laughs> but there's that misconception that you can buy a brand new rolex and it will always retain its value in fact for a very long time up until recent years if you buy a brand new rolex even if it was as hot as a submariner or a daytona you'd walk out the store and you'd lose about half your money in recent years there was the introduction of the premium concept and that is alongside many other things like Yeezys and sneakers and so on and even with that not all watches fetch a premium and if they don't fetch a premium you will end up losing a little bit more money but with supply and demand nowadays and demand and the actual community the watch community itself growing so much the loss on watches has become smaller and smaller and smaller that's what she said <laughs> you no longer lose half your money when you come out of the store on most models. Now we said top five Rolex myths, but I'm gonna leave you with a bonus one because that's a very, very important one. On to myth number six, Rolexes keep perfect time. Well, relatively. Mechanical watches have an acceptable tendency, plus minus a few seconds a day. In modern days, it's about plus minus two seconds a day with Rolexes. On the vintage ones, it's about plus minus six seconds a day. If you wanted a perfect timekeeper, that would be your smartphone or a smart watch that will keep perfect time but mechanical watches you've got to have a little bit of tolerance even the best of the best also have a tolerance even if you go with as complicated as a tourbillon you will still have to have an acceptable tolerance there are many things that could affect timekeeping including something as simple as gravity before we turn the video off i wanted to give you four myths that are actually not myths so four truths that people think are myths on to the first one rolex is not originally swiss correct rolex 
Rolex was never originally Swiss. Rolex actually started in the UK as a British company by Hans Wildorf and then moved to Switzerland for, of course, tax reasons, but also became one of the best things they've ever actually done because having the word Swiss made on your watches had now become a stamp or a medal of honor. Truth number two, and that's probably something that most people don't know. The word Rolex actually means absolutely nothing. The word Rolex was designed to be a very catchy name for branding purposes and hats down to them, they are one of the best brands in the world and one of the very best marketed companies in the world. Truth number three, Rolex have been to the deepest part of the ocean. And that's absolutely true. James Cameron and his team created one of the best submersibles around to dive down to the Mariana Trench, which is about 36,000 feet deep. You can fit Mount Everest at that depth and still have a few more thousand feet to go. In fact, 36,000 feet is higher than most commercial flights out there by thousands of feet. And what do they have on the outside of the submersible? A Rolex deep sea challenge. And that's why now James Cameron has a Rolex deep sea named after him with the blue and black dial. On to truth number four, Rolex produced their own parts and produced their own metals. That is absolutely true. Rolex have their own steel factories, refineries, produce their own mix of gold and produce their own parts. In fact, they're one of the very few brands that are actually 100% Swiss made because you don't actually have to be 100% Swiss made to qualify for the word Swiss made, but Rolex have ticked every single box to be a 100% Swiss made company. All Rolex parts are now made in-house, all their movements are made in-house, but who's to say they did use Zenith at one point like every other brand but for now they do stand as a hundred percent Swiss made company and a hundred percent in-house made company. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I cleared a lot of facts about Rolex. Let me know if you have any interesting ones in the comment section. Take care guys and see you in the next one.